Look, we're live. They haven't got up yet, Rita. They haven't got up, but we're getting there. Um, good morning, yeah. Facebook. Thank you so much well. for joining us. She got me on Facebook, y'all. You could tell. We're going to be getting started in just one minute. Yes, it is a happy Friday, Tawana. It is a happy Friday. We got a lot that we're going to be going over. You all are going to love, love, love this presentation that Rita is going to be getting into. It is going to blow your mind. Welcome, everybody, on Facebook. If you're on Facebook right now, thank you for joining us again for another wonderful uh, Financial Fair Friday. We know uh, you're listening from all over the country. If you could just real quick in here on the webinar as well, just type in where you are uh, looking at us from, whether you're in Georgia, uh, here in Maryland, in the Washington, D.C. area. Just let us know where you're looking at us from. Rita, do you have that up? Facebook? Yes, I have it up. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see where they tuning in from. Yeah, I'm a little sleepy this morning. Work with me. Work with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. And I don't know. I, I don't know what's going on with me, but welcome to our listeners on the phone. Thank you so much for joining us on Financial Fed Friday. Good morning. Good morning. Darlene, it's yeah. 10 I say we go with who's here. We got to keep this thing moving. Yes, we do. So let's get started. I will call myself going to um, play my music. But uh, <laughs> there we go. This is our move something. Facebook, come on, y'all. Let's move. Let's shake it up for a little bit. Let's do that. Keep your eye on the tiger. So, as you all know, this is Financial Fair Fridays. We have this webinar every Friday. We meet here at 10 a.m. Uh, on Fridays, and we broadcast live also on Facebook. So, welcome, Facebook. So, you're looking at us uh, live on Facebook. And what we're doing is we're pulling back the curtain so that you can get an in depth understanding of your federal benefits and the best retirement investment options. But it doesn't matter if you work for the federal government or not. We address issues for all working Americans, all working people. This series is for you. And you can register. Please send this out to your friends, events. And of course, you can go to our Facebook page at Your AB Solutions, like us and follow us there, and you will always get the notifications when we go live. The whole purpose is, um, like I said, just to help you understand your benefits, your money, your spending habits, and to support and offer solutions that will enable you to reach your financial destination. Rita and I are here to help guide you uh, along the path to reach what your financial destination you want that to be. So we're here for you. Just a real quick disclaimer, because we know we have a lot of people on here without knowing your own, without knowing your individual situation. Please just take this information as generic uh, in, in uh, contact. We context. We do a very generic approach uh, without into, like I said, without individual knowledge of your situation. We can't customize it. However, the good news is if you contact Rita and I. 301-577-6340. We can definitely put together a customized plan for you to help you develop your own roadmap to your financial destination. So we can do that. So please uh, accept what we've said as general in nature, what you can use, apply it to you, what you feel isn't for you. Just brush it to the side. But either way, at the end of the day, please contact Rita and I so we can put together a plan that will help you get to where you are trying to reach. So 
February is uh, Black History Month, and we want to give you this little black, major black history fact. The first black-owned bank, it was founded here in Washington, D.C. on March 2nd, 1888 by Reverend William Washington Brown, and it opened on April 3rd, 1889. Now, although the True Reformers Bank was the first Black-owned bank chartered in the United States, the Capital Savings Bank of Washington, D.C., right here in our nation's capital, was the first to actually open on October 17, 1888. And uh, we have our local bank here, which is black owned, which is Industrial Bank of America. So yes, we still have a black owned bank right here in the Washington DC area. So let's try to support them. Now at this point, Rita is going to take over and get into what we're discussing this week. Rita, you wanna go ahead and take over from here? Yes, you know y'all work with me. Y'all know I'm not the best, so I messed up something already. Darlene, don't you say nothing to me. <laughs> don't say nothing. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> okay, so what exactly do you see on your screen? Do you see Love Yourself Month? We made Love the Yourself. We made the commitment. Now let's put a Love ring on it. On it. I tell you guys, this right here was something that just came to me um, last month. And as I was thinking about it, I have a good friend who I think is on the line. She's getting married. And last year I married my niece and I did her entire nine week premarital um, um, counseling. And one of the things that it just, just stuck out to me as I was doing this counseling, one of the things that my pastor always teach us is that as it is in the spirit is also in, in the natural. So let me put this, this disclaimer. I am not trying to bring you church. I'm not trying to make you believe in God. I'm not trying to do any of that. But understanding that everything that goes on, it happened way back when, and there has a purpose for everything. So we was doing her premarital. I had a lot of aha moments as it relates to money, finance, Finances life. One of the things that stuck out the most to me in that process is that when I did the session on them was on a commitment and covenants. And when you thought about the covenant back then, God had made a covenant with the children of Israel. If you're Muslim, if you're anything else in this line, this is just want you to understand the concept. Don't get caught up in as called God name or Jesus, but his covenant was with the people. And even if they messed up, which they did so many times, he never went against his commitment and his promise to them. So as we think about our finances, there's going to be things that happen to us financially that will take us off of our commitment. What this says is that we have to be committed to it. And we're going to talk about what that ring means, because when you marry, whether you marry your partner, you be married to your commitment to your children, you can marry to your community, your business. When you make some commitment, those commitments actually mean something. So let's talk about it. So we think about the marriage and the commitment, and I'm going to bring them both together. Trust me, a commitment is making a vow to each other, to, your, to, to God. And this is what they were doing back then. So they made commitments, which they made a vow. And the vow was to God, it was to their family, and it was to all of the people in their community, to the children of Israel. Now, there were two types of commitment. One was unconditional vow and one was a conditional vow. The unconditional vow is an oath where somebody pledges something without expecting anything in return. So you're not expecting anything, but you're going to make this pledge. The conditional vow contains a condition before oath, which had to come to pass before the vow becomes valid. So let me give you most of us make a conditional vow when we work because we go to this job and we tell them we bring in our skills, our expertise, our degrees, um, experiences, all this stuff we're bringing to the table. We're going to do this work for these two weeks, for this month, for this week, however you, 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 you get paid, with the condition that after you perform this job, they will then give you a check in the end. So you made a vow to them and they made a vow to you and it's conditioned on you doing what you said you were going to do and they doing what they said they're going to do. And that vow continues every two weeks, every week, every month. So we make vows 
time. You make a vow to your child. If you decided to birth it, to bring it to fruition, you're saying, I'm willing to either if you can't, and even if you was adopted or you had to give your child away, even in that, you made a commitment for this child to, to live. But let's say you made a commitment, darling has Jordan. She is 16 years old, soon to be 17. She's had yeah. to make serious commitments financially, mentally, spiritually, everything to help bring this girl and her life to fruition. Now, what about? They're completely voluntary. When I did the study, it's completely voluntary. Back then, it was it was voluntary. God didn't ask anybody to make a vow. But if you made the vow, it had to be fulfilled. Otherwise, it was considered a sin. And I'm like, okay, how do you relate that to finances? Well, for us, there's financial consequences when we say we're going to do something and we don't. See, if you guys remember my story, I made a vow that I will sell that house two year, two six months after I bought it. I made a vow to God and I made a vow to myself that I was no longer going to be in that stressful situation where I forgot my vow. Now, I volunteered that to God. I was like, look, let me just get his house up. There was consequences as a result of me not doing that. I struggled in that house trying to pay $5,000 a month for three years. That was a struggle. That was a consequence yeah. that I did not have to have simply because I didn't keep the vow that I made to myself and to, okay, God, free me from this. I can't afford this house. I knew going into that deal that I could not afford the house, darling. I told you, I cannot afford this. But I'm already done dump $52,000 in. How do I walk away? You can't just say, forget the deal, and then you lose your money. I say, I stay here six months, and I flip it. Well, I got comfortable, and that's what happens to us. We get comfortable in where we are, that we forget where we're supposed to be going. And so, and pride, Rita, that's the next thing, too. Pride and shame will keep us from fulfilling our vows because we're ashamed that we may not be doing what we're supposed to do. So, and we're too prideful to reach out for help. Girl, you gonna make me get, you know, I'm trying to not get emotional here, you guys, but that is so serious because I didn't want to sell my house. I didn't even put a sell sign in the yard. If you ever remember my house, it never was a sell sign because my pride and I was embarrassed. I was ashamed that I had to sell what I thought was my dream home. I had to give it up because I could no longer afford it. It wasn't only stressful. It was draining my bank. I couldn't pay. You know, I was paying what, what, what was that? I was paying 60 grand a year just for a home. Another, what was that, Dolly? Another 15000 just for a car. On your car. And so that was the note, that. not the insurance. That was just, so it was crazy, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to just understand what this all means as it relates to our finance. So, you know, when you get married, some of us got a ring. Like, I got me a ring, y'all. And I, I know y'all, y'all know we like the joke. So I had to just tell y'all he went to Jared. This, Bernard didn't go to Jared, but I just thought that was cute. He went to Jared, you know, the commercial. Okay, back to this thing. <laughs> back to our ring. And a ring symbolizes the commitment. It's the vow you made to yourself, to your partner, God, in the community. That's what it means. So when you're about to get married, we talk about what this ring means. So this ring means this. Now, some of you probably will say, I ain't married. I don't want to ever be, be married because that last marriage was this. Oh, I'm not this. Maybe your marriage isn't to a spouse. Maybe your marriage is to your children because you made a commitment to them. Maybe it's for me, it's, it's I made a commitment to ABS to be the owner, to do this. So therefore, I cannot let go of the commitment that I made to this company to make sure that it becomes all that I can get it and with all of the assistance that I had. So maybe what we need to do is wear some rings. So I put on some extra rings, but this is a ring. And this ring is from Globe Life. I don't know if you, you can see. It's a ring that I got from Globe Life. And every year, I produce, they increased my diamond. It started out at an eighth of diamond and a quarter, a half. And when it got to one carat diamond, so this is a symbol of my ability to produce a certain amount of production every single year. And they were me with something. So that was that vow. Say, Rita, if you give us this business, we will give you something in return. And for most company, it was a trip and it was a ring. I wear this a lot of time, not just because it's gold and it matches my outfit, but it reminds me of, I can truly produce. Some days you tire, you don't want to work, you don't make no phone call. And sometimes you need something to remind you of what the commitment you made to this business. Me of, I can't so that's called trying to see you still don't want to work. Okay, darling, thank you. I got you. <laughs> I've been on 
over here trying to figure out how to get on Facebook. So the ring also was derived. Now look at this, you guys. The ring was derived from humble beginnings of an imperfect metal to create something striking where there once was nothing at all. So maybe today you broke. Maybe today there's nothing in your bank account. Maybe things are slim. Maybe things in your world financially look like you're not going to survive. Then you need to create a ring. So I've got on the thumb ring. And now this one does say for me, it says Jesus, but that's what I had. So maybe you just need to put a ring on it. Put a ring so that you can remind yourself this outward visible sign that you've committed yourself to something. And remember, this ring was saying at one point it was nothing. It was imperfect. Now it's going to become something that's something. Now remember, if you're 50, if you're 60, if you're 30, if you're 20, if you intend to live longer than tomorrow, which is all of us assuming that we're going to live a little longer, let's create something, a commitment, put a ring on it so we can now know that one day, I'm planning for the old reader. Now I'm praying that I get there, but because we don't know when we're going to leave this world, we can't be, um, what's the word, <laughs> willy-nilly, milkatosis, don't care. We got to put something in place and we got to make a commitment. So wear a ring for your children. Maybe you don't want, like I said, it ain't about, this ain't about people being married. I'm giving you some statistics of what it means. But maybe for years, I was 47 when I got married. I had to be married to myself. Not the young one who could hustle, who could work two, you know, who could work twelve hours a day, get up four o'clock in the morning, go to bed two o'clock in the morning. That girl, I had to, re I had to work for the one who was going to be eighty years old one day, or maybe seventy eight, and can't move as much because you know, even the one fifty two this year can't move like she was when she was thirty. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah. So. I had to commit to the old reader. I didn't have children. I was fearful. Who's going to take care of me when I get old? I had to begin to think about this old gray haired woman who won't be able to do as much as she do. She can't drive like she used to. She can't go, go out and see a client. She's going to need some care and some, somebody to love her. And maybe it won't be a person around. How do I prepare my finances that my finances can help take care of me now? To all of my nieces, nephews, friends, clients, when I get old, don't y'all leave me there. Y'all ain't got no kids. Come somebody, come by and visit a sister, okay? <laughs> come, check on, come check on me too. Well, we're going to be together, so... You can make one stop in one location and knock out two old birds. Yeah. So <laughs> what are your financial vows and what did you commit to? And who did you commit to? Did you commit to a spouse? I decided to get married. Now it's not just about me. I committed to a husband through the good times. And when we say them vows, just remember y'all who take vows, you say in good times and bad and sickness and in good health. All of that, you're saying you're going to commit to this person? Well, commit to your finances. Yeah, Rita, I filed bankruptcy. Yeah, I foreclosed on my house. Yeah, the IRS took all my money. Yes, I had a business and it went bad. Trust me, I believe that because I have been through all of that. Yes, my credit cards were all maxed out. I can be touched by your feelings. But these are some vows that we've made to ourselves, to our children, to our parents. And so we have to remember what we made those financial vows. So let's look at these vows and are you keeping them? Now, this is not what we said. It's been studies done and they said that people priorities are not quite the way they need to be. 77% of us are willing to buy something for a loved one for a special occasion, a birthday, Valentine's Day, Christmas Day, getting married but only 69% will spend money on their family's financial security. So I will buy you something for Christmas, but I'm not willing to invest some money to make sure you have your financial stuff together, to make sure that you have life insurance in place, to make sure, aren't we tired of when people passing away, calling around to see if we can get some money or the, the people still ain't buried three, four weeks later simply because they don't have life insurance. What I was taught when we first got into this business, darling, yes. you may remember, I don't know who said it. I don't know if it was Mr. James, our mentor, Mr. Scott. I don't know. But what I remember is said the most important policy is the policy that's enforced when you die. Not when the one you die. That you have, not the one that's a million dollars. I know we all want a million. We may want 200, but it's the one that's enforced when you die. And all you can afford is a $10,000 policy. Put that $10,000 in for. Don't leave this financial burden on someone else because you were waiting for something else and some other priorities took place. The next priority is that millennials are willing to pay. This is what they say. 
$718 a month to ensure financial security for their loved ones. Yet 53% of them have life insurance with only costs for them. Uh, and then this is 13 a month. Now this is not in stone. I'm almost positive you guys, they made this on a term policy. But if all you got is $13, don't you know that you can contact us and we can get you some life insurance? So it doesn't have to cost much. So what we say is one thing and what we do is something else. And I remember my parents clearly, clearly saying, do what I tell you to do, not what I do. And you know that's not just how that works, right? We do what they do, not what they say. And so we need to start becoming people who do what we say we're going to do. And the last one. And Javon also said, um, I'm looking at our Facebook comments, and Javon also said uh, that uh, GoFundMe is not an insurance policy. Woo. You don't okay. use that to bury your loved ones. Now, if you have to, that's one thing. However, Ooh. for pennies a day, you don't need to do a GoFundMe. That's not your life insurance policies. And these millennials, I love them. They're really driving our future. And they're, you know, the new saying now is stay woke. Well, <laughs> that slide Rita just showed you, you need to stay woke. <laughs> you'll put all of this money, as she said, over here, you'll say, I'm going to, you know, I'm willing to spend $700 towards financial security. But when you, we come and talk to you and we tell you, oh, well, it's $50 a month. Oh, I don't have that. But you'll stand in line or wait online to get a $900 cell phone. <laughs> and you'll insure that, but you won't insure the person that's paying the bill. Good. And did you just say something? They're staying in line all night long to get the new phone. Some of them, if you talk about you're going to be 20 minutes late to get to them for their appointment, they need to reschedule. You guys, we're not saying this because we're in this business. We want your business. We are in business for business. What I'm saying is that we really need to start looking at these commitments and these vow and our priorities because we need to stay woke, y'all. If you look at what's happening in this economy, what's happening around, if we don't take our finances serious, we don't become like the rich people where, you know, the rich people got money. Well, they got money because they take their finances serious. They yeah. look at their budget. They pay attention to stuff. So let's just keep this thing going. Yes, keep it going, Rita. Now, most people will protect their things with insurance then protect their loved ones with life insurance. So you got car insurance. Well, Rita, the state makes me get car insurance. Well, we need to probably go down to Congress, Darlene, and start making the state make them get some life insurance. So, which is so crazy. If you think about it, the government and society care more about your things than you than they care about your life because they're going to make you protect your car. The investors, when you buy this loan, on this home, they say, you know what? We need you to protect this house. Now, we don't really care about your life. And if you die or whatever, you get sick. We're not concerned about that. What we're concerned about is our property. You know why? Because that's a priority to them. What's your priority? Is it you? Is it your family? Is it your children? Make your priority the people who really need to help take care of you. I got insurance. Why? Because I need to make sure something happened to me that my family can put me away. My mother died, as you guys know, when I was 11. My, my mother had some insurance. And back then, what she probably had insurance was a lot. But when you think about a husband, a home, three kids that were under 15. So I was 11, Renee was 13, and Robert was almost 15 years old. We talking about even if you just get Robert to 18 and then four years of college, that's seven years of financial support. Renee is yep. 13 to college. She went, that was nine. I was 11. That was 11. You add all that up. My mother needed 22 years of money set aside in addition to helping support my, my dad with the home and everything else because she was not a stay at home mom. She had a good income that provided for the family. When that's no longer there, what do you have in place to make sure what you said that we were important to make sure it lasts? Now she worked for the government. I know some of y'all, well, I got a pension. Times have changed, the amounts have changed, but $377 in 1977 was not enough for three kids. It was just enough where we, my aunt and uncle couldn't get any support, but not enough for them to really do anything. Because now not only did they have three more kids to feed, 
they had three more kids to clothe. And if any of y'all know me from back in the day, I was very greedy little girl. I ate like a construction worker. So I probably ate more than Robert and Renee put together. So they had to feed us. They had to clothe us. They now had to move from their two-bedroom apartment to get a three-bedroom apartment. We still was crammed in there. And that's because that's all they could afford with what we had. We had three boys in a room and me and Renee in a room. We didn't, you know, we don't remember it being tough, but it's because it wasn't enough money in place to help take care of us in that term. So get yourself together. Now, does your vows line up with your core values? What are those? For some of you guys, it could be security. You want to just make sure that you're secure. You want to make sure you have more time with your family. You want freedom. You don't know, you, you don't want to be bound to your job and to things. You want to just have this thing of being calm and feeling like you have a life. What you spend your money in, does it line up with what you really say you believe and who you are? You just want to live longer. So if, if your goal is to live longer and be an example to your family, then don't you need to prepare for the old lady or the old man who's going to live longer? What do you think, Dolly? And that's what you And remember, an example can be a good example or a bad example. Ooh. Either way, we setting an example. Absolutely. And making a difference. So if you want to make a difference, are you do, do you have enough money to give to charity? Are you tired? Are you going to the homeless? What are you doing to line your values up and your vows to what you believe? So here's a chart and that Jenkins will upload. I think you already did this, but we'll upload it again. So how do you spend your money? This whole chart is for you to start keeping track. Now, you're going to spend $500 a month on some clothing. Your core value is that you want to make a difference. Unless you buy some clothes to put in a fashion show to help a charity. I don't know. That's why. Does that matter? It's people. I just talked to a girl the other day. She said she bought a purse for $2,000. She didn't have $2,000 in her savings account, but she spent $2,000 on a purse. That is crazy. That's what she the rich probably do. used to get her, put it on her credit card. Which is now going to charge her interest, which is now going to continue to keep her in debt. And so we continue to go around like little hamsters in the cage, just running on that treadmill of financial insecurity because of our habits. And our habits come from our emotions, and it keeps driving our financial futures and so we got to get off of that treadmill please give us a call so we can help you if you're not already doing it some of you may but let's get our values aligned with our spending habits absolutely and so your financial fitness means is not a pipe dream like, so we know, I think Sophia is online, you know, she's a fitness coach and her fitness is all about bringing our bodies, bringing our, our diet, bringing all of that stuff into this place that is healthy for us. Well, financial also is fitness and it's not a pipe dream or a state of mind. It's just not something you say. It's a reality if you're willing to pursue it and to embrace it. And what I say, are you willing to commit to it? Trust me, Rita has been every example, a bad example of spending too much money, buying stuff she cannot afford, paying $1,100 for a car note because her credit was bad, paying $5,000 for a mortgage because her credit was bad, you know, just shopping all the time, buying clothes. This is another whole section that I will teach probably in the spring about healing our emotions because our emotions affect our finances. So your financial fitness, we must commit to being healthy and with our finances. So what's your plan of action? I got something for you. You need to operate and live on a budget. You know, I am a budget queen. I will send you a budget. We're going to break it down. Let us show you how to increase your paycheck without a raise. So not only do you need to live on a budget, we have plans that can show you how to give yourself and raise without actually getting a raise on your job. Your savings, emergency and savings. Stop, you know, spending your money. Talk with a client a few days ago. She only had this amount of money saved. She didn't even have enough to cover one full month of her expenses. And I get it. She's planning for her children, which I think is admirable to put funds aside for your children. And if she's listening, oh, you know, no offense to anybody, but we need to make sure we understand the foundation, as you saw, the foundation of our wealth is having enough savings and emergency for a time. So we may need to push off 
putting something in this retirement plan or putting something to pay down all your debt. What happens if something come up and you don't have no money? It puts you back into debt, right? You're either going to yep. charge, you're not going to pay your mortgage, you're not going to pay your car note, and it's a vicious cycle. As Darlene talked about, you being in that hamster, you just keep doing the same thing over and over because the foundation to your wealth is not secure. And we have plans that you can get a 3% on your savings, so talk to us. Monitor and maintain good credit. Y'all, this is so serious. It took me years because because you can make money, it doesn't mean you need to spend your money. So because I had bad credit, I probably have spent over a 15 year time period, $2 million, I would say, just because I had bad credit. You think about it, your car insurance is more if you're bad, if you have bad credit. All of your debt, everything you do, people look at you and based on your credit. And because they believe you're not good with your credit, based on your score and what it looks like, you're not going to pay them back. So they charge you more so that they can make a profit just in case you decide you're not going to pay them back. Even though I paid them all back because I didn't make getting that credit score a priority for years, I gave a lot more money. For that house, the neighbor next door to me, my house was a little bit bigger, but he paid $2,000 less than I did. So for three years, if you can imagine, if I had good credit, that would have been 60, almost $100,000 that I would have been able to save between my house and my car simply if I'd have had good credit. That's just three years, y'all. How long have you gone with bad credit? And how much of that bad credit is stealing from that old you? Insure your love. What does that mean? For you, your family, your business, you need to have some life insurance. You need to have disability and long-term care. People get sick before they die. If you don't have a plan in place, where's that paycheck? Who's going to protect your paycheck? Who's going to make sure that the bills get paid? My mother worked for the government. The government didn't have disability in 1974 when she was diagnosed with colon cancer. They don't have it today. And so she worked a week and was off a month. We went from a middle-class family, postal worker, my father working for the Safeway, to us being on food stamps. Why? Because there was no plan in place for when they got sick. Long-term care. You, we all gonna get old. If your goal is to save for the OU, where well, the OU may need some care, what plan do you have in place? Critical chronic illness, cancer, come heart attack. There are plans in place to make sure that you can prevent yourself from going through. The worst part about being sick is worrying also about how you're gonna pay your bills. Many times we can't even heal properly because we worry about how we're going to take care of our bills. What we're going to do, our children need this. There's a bunch of worry. And worry, if you know, it messes with the immune system and every illness lies in the immune system. So we're sicker simply because we're worried and we're worried because we didn't complete and do what we said we were do financially. Now, so solidify your housing. Now, whether you want to, some of you don't want to be bothered with a house. I'm not mad at you. There's a lot of work with a house. But if you decide to do it, let's look at some programs that may help you. There's programs out here for no down payment. There's new homes that give you closing call. There's NAC and there's HPAC. There's all of these programs. So before you move fast, because you got a dream, sit down and make sure you get all the help you can. Because the more somebody else pay for you to get in a house, the less you have to pay and the more you can save. Properly prepare for your children's education. And I know for some of you, you were just trying to feed them for years. And I get it. And I'm not trying to say that, you know, no matter what, you need to be having all these funds aside. What I'm saying is that because you know where you are, this budget becomes even more important. And I tell you, and I'm going to go real quick because I think we're out of town. But Joe yeah. Dudley used to say, he used to save $5 a week. And it was only not because it was a lot of money. It's because he was creating a habit. Maybe you can't afford a 529 plan. Maybe you don't even have enough for a life insurance. But you got enough to go to the store. And when you cash your dollar, you can take the change and throw it in a bank. I got plenty of banks, y'all. For years, I did not save money per se. But I had plenty of banks around that was full of change that any day could cash out and probably get over $1,000 in change. Prepare for your retirement and plan for multiple streams of retirement income. We help you create an income plan in retirement. Inquire with us about why would you want to end that annuity with a lifetime income and family riders. We offer all these things that can help assist you with your financial commitment and leave a legacy. 
Leave your family something if you choose to. Don't leave them bills. Don't leave them with a GoFundMe account that Javon talked about trying to ensure your them because you wouldn't make the commitment to leave them. Even if you don't leave them rich, even if you don't leave them with a dime, don't leave them with any of your commitments. And you know, Reed, I just want to say one thing about leaving a legacy. So many times I'll talk to people, especially like when I'm talking to them about life insurance, the first thing out their mouth, some of them will say is, well, I'm not trying to make anybody rich. Why? Why not? When someone dies, when we're doing our web, when we're doing our uh, seminars and uh, our presentations, we're always looking, for, you know, oh, did, did somebody leave me something? When, you be the one to leave something. We're always looking to get something, but we yeah. have to be willing to give something. Yes. To get something back. What you put out, you get back. Why not be the face of change for your family? And the generations to and come. And the generations to come because we never want to make somebody rich. I want, I want my family to know I'm rich. I'm in a better position because of my cousin Darlene. Absolutely. And I need my picture over the fireplace. It, that picture yes. gets generate who is that that's a reader man she left us some estate plan and we was able to go my kids went to college because of that my grandma yeah let have my picture yeah. and my side. portrait gonna be just like this i don't know no. i gotta take the shine off my head first <laughs> <laughs> so come on girl we gotta hurry up you bring it. So this all about y'all planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. Procrastination is the thief of our tomorrow. Don't let waiting steal your tomorrow. Today is all you have. Start today. Even if all you need to say, Rita, send me an email, call the office, just reach out to us. Say, I'm ashamed of where I am. I've been ashamed. I have been broke. The IRS has seized my account. All my credit cards have been maxed out. I had a house that I couldn't afford. I had cars that I couldn't afford. I had all of that. So I understand where you are and you're not alone. But if you don't do something, you will stay in that quiet mire and your mind and all of that begins to affect how you think, how you live, how you operate and how you deal with people because of where you feel on the inside. So we're going to keep this thing going. This is Love Yourself Month. Y'all, this is all about love. Our finances tell us how much we love. Rita didn't love herself enough to put some aside for herself. She loved everything and everybody else. She didn't love her. That's, that's no longer the case. So as we the next week, we're going to talk about loving the skin you in, diversity in the workplace. That's important for you guys. You know what? And for, for a minute, it took me a minute to understand this whole thing about diversity in the workplace because Darlene and I and my brother, and you know we got a small office and it's just us. But we've been discriminated when we've gone out. Remember, remember one time we went, I'm not going to say where we were. We went there and Judy was working with us. You know, Judy is Caucasian. She is our retired person. She was blown away at how we were treated simply because of our skin. It is real, you guys. And if you don't know how to operate and how to deal with this in the workplace. So Allison is our guest speaker next week. She's going to talk to you about how to deal with that in the workplace so that it doesn't impact your promotion. It allows you to be the best that you can be and help the other people and not hate on them because guess what? Ignorance is everywhere. And so it's part of our job is to help teach people how to treat us, but to love who we are. And this is important, not just in the workplace for me. We're going to talk about it from the workplace. But if you come to my event next week, it's about everything. I did not love the skin I was in based on where I was emotionally. So for the women out there, my sisters keepers, join me next Saturday. It is going to be life changing. And guess what? Some of you guys, I said, you may be good. You ain't got nothing going on, but you just want to come and hang out with some women, have some fun, laugh a lot, get your body moving. We're going to have a concert. It is going to be so well. But for me, it's all about empowering your mind, your body, and your soul. I've been on a journey for 10 years to heal from an internal place. And that yep. internal place is reflecting. People say, oh, I'm not doing anything, but I'm no longer broken on the inside. And yes, when you met me, I was broken and I covered it up. So maybe Maybe you're covering up really where you are, how you feel, and what it's doing to you and your finances. A broken reader was a broke girl because she didn't know who she was. And when you don't know who you are, it impacts every aspect of your life. So join me next week. We're going to have some fun, and we got some really good people. And I picked these people because these people have impacted my change. Yes. And so and I'm going to share it, people with you. 
And if you thought what, you know, I was looking at some of the comments on Facebook, some of you that are on our live webinar, if you thought this was fire, just by looking at some of the comments, when you come next Saturday, prepare to have your hair blown back because it is going to be phenomenal. Rita is really downplaying it. You won't leave like you came. I'll tell you that much. It's something there for everybody. Like Rita said, whether you think your finances are okay, and it's not just, just about your finances. This is all. The tricks that has been perpetuated against us as women is that we think the next woman is against us, when in fact she is not. We're all looking for the same thing, a bond, a sisterhood bond, somebody that can identify with some of the struggles that we're going through, that we can go to and say, girl, whatever, whatever. I can't believe this is happening to me. Honey, I'm going through menopause. <laughs> somebody out there can identify with me. These hot Ooh. flashes, somebody out there know what I'm talking about. But we're so concerned because we have been conditioned to think that this next woman is going to have something negative to say about us. And we're trying to change that conditioning because that's not how it is. That's not how it's supposed to be. My abundance is for your lack. Your lack, I have, you can get from my abundance and together we can network so that none should suffer lack. Yes. Make sure you're there next Saturday. You yes. don't want to miss it. It's life changing. Casual. Dress casual because I don't want you thinking about what I'm going to wear trying to be cute. We're yes. going to wear some jeans, some sweatpants. We're going to be doing moving. It's not about how we look on the outside. It's about how we want to feel on the inside. On and the how inside would transfer and we become butterflies where we start out right as a caterpillar and then we blossom into something beautiful that can fly away because we really know who we are. I'm excited about all of my speakers and I'm telling you a super thank you to my to my event planner and she's going to be a speaker who's going to blow your mind. And so I'm excited. I'm excited that you're coming. Please share it with your friends and your family. If the men are on the line, if you're watching from Facebook, tell to your wife, tell your daughters because guess what? This is stuff I wish I would have known when I was 20, when I was 25 and the impact it would have had on me as a child. So here's our information. Reach out to us. Our address, 8181 Professional Place, Suite 207 Highsville. The number, the office, 301-577-6340. For those on the line listening, 301-577-6340. And you can contact us at info at yourabsolutions.com. Inc.com and that's solutions with an S. So as we say, from my hearts to yours, we say thank you very much. We appreciate you having it this month, a month of love that you've been loving on us and you've been sticking with us. The best is yet to come, you guys. We got so much because I want to empower us on this side financially so that we're no longer in the financial place that we were, we begin to change. And when we come together collectively with money, we can then make some moves and we can do some things together to help change our community and eventually help change the world. Absolutely. And Lucy Lou from uh, on Facebook, she said she's making a commitment to come and see us. Thank you, Lucy. We can't wait to see you. Also, we have uh, Ravonda watching us live, Lynette, Crystal Terrell, Ladybug. Hi, Ladybug. Thank you for tuning in. Give us a call. Make the commitment today. Do something. Give us a call. You won't regret it. Yes. Our information is there on the screen. If you're on the phone, 301 577 Six three four zero, and our time is up. We appreciate you hanging in there with us over our uh, time, our appointed time limit. Please come back next Friday. Be here on the broadcast, and when you come, bring one. Share us, like us on your page. We're trying to change the world. Wait a minute, wait a minute, don't end, don't end. We got a special hello to Lynette Horton. Good morning, Lynette, Sharon Cooper, all of those people showing up. Thank you guys for loving on us and for showing up every week. You guys come back and bring people yes. because what my manager says that knowing is half the battle. We need to know it so we can then put some things in place. We're in not going to be a bunch of old broke people. We're going to be wealthy and we're going to build wealth together. I'm excited about that. Yes. Yes. Hi, Mom, Mickey. Hi, Mom. 
Hey, <laughs> Move Fitness, she's going to be there. Sophia Price. Go check out her page, Move Fitness. Uh, wow. Also, Prophetess Lisa uh, is on the watching us. Thank you, everybody. Spread the word. We are, you know, we are changing people's lives one at a time. Thanks to you. So we'll see you back here next week on the broadcast at 10 a.m. Thank you all. Thank you. And thank you for staying longer with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Facebook. Read. I don't think people want to leave. I wish we had some. Hi, Alberto. How are you? Thank you for joining us. I just saw you were on. How are you? Thank you, Jerry. Thank you for getting on. I hope you all can make it next week. Tawana, Jerry. Everybody, and go register now, please, because we gonna have food for y'all. I want to make sure I have enough. I don't want y'all talking about me. I have enough food. Please go get the food. I mean, go get your ticket so I can have all the good stuff for you. Okay. All righty. All right, Darlene. Oh, I think we're done. Girl, Robin said your loved one is stuck at the mall because no one thought to transfer the risk to the insurance. <laughs> Yes, Robert. Whoa, that that's right, Robert Bailey on Facebook. Your loved one. Don't have your loved one stuck at the mall. Don't have them stuck there while you're trying to get the funds from GoFundMe because you didn't transfer the week the the risk. And that was some fire. And on that note, we gotta go. Y'all have a great Friday.